Personally, I like a bit of texture and bite to my pork ribs, but some people like them fall off the bone. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make fall off the bone smoked pork ribs. All right, so to get started, we're gonna get our smoker going. We're gonna be using the Oklahoma Joe's Bronco Drum Smoker. We're gonna open our lid and take our cooking grate off, and then we're gonna remove our heat deflector. Then you wanna fill your charcoal basket up with either lump charcoal or briquettes. Now I don't stress too much about overfilling the charcoal basket in a drum. If I've got any left over at the end of the cook, I'll shut my vents down, kill the fire, and then any unburnt charcoal or briquettes I'll use for the next cook. And then next, I'm just gonna get a fire lighter in there and light it up. So we've got a nice little rack of spare ribs we're gonna be working with, but if you've got some baby backs and wanna follow along to this video, you can absolutely do that. And these ones, they don't really need much trimming at all. I'm just gonna get rid of a little bit of fat and silver skin at the top here, maybe a touch there. And then as we get over to the underside, we just wanna take this membrane off now. So I like to just get a butter knife, I'll go a few bones in, and then I'll slide my butter knife under the membrane like so. I'll give it a bit of a wiggle around, and then I'll get my finger under that membrane. I'll try not to break it like I just did. And then get some paper towel, which will help you grip the membrane. And then you just wanna remove it and pull it away like so. It's just a little bit more here I can get rid of, and that's looking pretty good. I've just got an ugly end bone there. I'm just gonna trim off and square up. That meat on the back there is okay. So I reckon we can season these up now. All right, so before we season these up, I'm just gonna hit them with a little bit of yellow mustard, which will help our rubs stick to the meat. Flip them over and do the same to the underside. And then if you've got a favorite pork rib rub, go ahead and use that, but I'm gonna be using a combination of our honey soy slammer, and then we're gonna to top it off with some steak shooter. So we're gonna go down with a nice light coat of our honey soy slammer. This is a really nice sweet rub, and then we'll top it off with our steak shooter, which is nice and savory. And then we'll pat it all in, and that steak shooter is gonna give it a nice red color as well. And we'll get our edges while we're here with any rub we've got on the cutting board, and then we'll do the same to the top. All right, now these are ready to go once our smoke is ready, which is what we're gonna check on now. All right, so as you can see, our fire lighter is burnt out and our briquettes have caught light nicely. So now we can shut our lid and then we wanna make sure both of our vents are wide open and then we'll let our barbecue preheat to just below our target temperature, which for this cook is gonna be 250 Fahrenheit or 120 Celsius. All right, so we're ready to get these pork ribs on and I've just got some smoking wood ready. I've gone with a nice, beautiful little chunk of nectarine wood. I find that most fruit woods will go well with pork, but if you've got another favorite smoking wood for pork, go ahead and use that. But for now, we're gonna open our smoker back up. I'm gonna get that smoking wood chunk right on the fire. Then we're gonna get our heat deflector back in, and then our cooking grate can go back on, and then our beautiful little rack of pork ribs. Now have a look at that color already. That's looking amazing, but for now, we wanna shut this lid because our smoker is obviously gonna drop temperature while we've got our lid open. But once we recover to that 250 Fahrenheit or 120 Celsius, I'm gonna shut our intake vent down to around there, then I'll give our smoker 10 minutes to see where it stabilizes off. And if I need to increase temperature, I'll just open it up a little bit. If I need to decrease, I'll shut it down a little bit more. But for now, like I said, I'll leave that open until our temperature's recovered. But as for fire management in a drum smoker, it's super easy. So now our pork ribs are on, the first part of this cook is gonna be relatively straightforward. All I really need to worry about is some fire management, which I've just gone through. Like I said, it's quite easy in a drum smoker. But if you're using something like a Weber kettle, I'll put a video link down in the description for you to check out, which is purely based on Weber kettle fire management. And apart from that, I'm simply just gonna let these pork ribs go for around an hour before we come back and check on them. All right, our ribs have been going for a little over an hour now. I usually like to leave them for around 60 to 90 minutes for the first part of the cook. They're starting to develop a really nice, deep, rich mahogany color. Our rubber's almost set to the meat. There's still a few little spots where it's coming off, so I reckon we'll shut our lid and we'll let them go for another 20 minutes or so. All right, so it's been another 20 minutes, which puts us around 90 minutes into this cook. I'm happy with these ribs, so let's get them out and wrap them up. All right, so I've just got two layers of foil here. We've got three little chunks of butter and around a tablespoon worth of brown sugar. Now I'm just gonna lay our pork ribs meat side down, and then I'm gonna get some more butter on the underside, some more brown sugar, and then around a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Now it's up to you what type of liquid you wanna use in your foil wrap. If you wanna go more savory, you can use something like chicken stock. If you wanna go something sweeter without the acidity of apple cider vinegar, then you can go something like apple juice or pineapple juice. But for now, we're gonna wrap these up nice and tight. And then these can go back in the smoker. So it's at this stage of the cook where the pork ribs are all wrapped up that they're gonna get nice and tender. 
and the time it takes them to get nice and tender is going to vary depending on the thickness of your pork ribs. These ones are relatively thin, so I reckon it's going to take another 60 to 90 minutes for them to become that fall apart tenderness. But if we were using some nice thick baby back ribs, then we'd be looking at more towards two to three hours for them to get nice and tender. So all I'm going to do now is let these go for around another 60 minutes, and then we'll come back and check on them for probe tenderness. All right, so our pork ribs have been wrapped up for an hour and a half now, so that puts us around three hours total into this cook. I did check after 45 minutes and they just weren't probing too well. So let's have a probe around now. These bones have got some awesome drawback on them. So I reckon these are gonna be ready. They are feeling super tender and they're probing right around 210 Fahrenheit or around 99-ish degrees Celsius. So I'm just very carefully gonna move these aside for a moment. I'm just gonna get a tray down with a cake rack on there as well. And then I'm gonna get our pork ribs on there. As you can see, these are super, super soft, so I need to be very careful while I'm doing this. But we want to get them back in, meat side up. And then I'm just going to get a little pan down. You can go ahead and get your favorite sauce or glaze ready. I'm just going to get some of our hookshot whiskey jalapeno barbecue sauce in there. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of our wrap juices as well. And now we just want to close our lid to let our pork ribs kind of dry out a bit and to get some color back. And we also want to let our barbecue sauce heat up as well. All right, and after five minutes or so, we can open our lid, give our barbecue sauce a little stir, and then baste our pork ribs. And then we'll close our lid and let that sauce set for around five minutes. All right, and then once your sauce is set, you can either go ahead and give it another coat, but I'm happy with these, and I feel like I need to show you how tender these are. So just look at that bone falling away from the meat. Nice, clean bone, super tender, fall off the bone pork ribs. Let's get these out and have a taste. All right, so I've just lifted that cake rack out. So I'm just gonna carefully flip our pork ribs over and we will slice a couple. You're gonna need a super sharp knife to get through pork ribs like this. Now we can have a taste. Mm. They are still really, really good. But like I said earlier on, I definitely prefer mine with a bit more bite and texture to them. But if you like super tender, fall off the bone pork ribs, then these are absolutely incredible. So there you have it. There's how to make fall off the bone smoked pork ribs. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. But for now, that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.